Hello, my name is Jess and welcome to Wildlife Watch. I'm currently working on the Far Sand Dunes Project, which is a natural flood defence and conservation project on the northwest coastline of England. Today, I'm going to talk to you about marine pollution. Marine pollution isn't just the litter that you'll find on the beach, and there are many different types of marine pollution. They affect all the different types of marine habitats, from our coastal sand dunes to the deepest depths of the ocean, to tropical coral reefs and even the polar seas. There are many threats to our ocean and our fight against plastic straws is just the beginning. First up, chemical pollution. This includes the wastewater runoff from the use of pesticides and fertilisers in the agricultural businesses such as farming. The use of chemical fertilisers has been deemed one of the biggest threats to our ocean. Fertilisers add nutrients to the soil, however, these nutrients can enter the ocean through heavy rainfall or river rind runoff. This then enriches the coastal ecosystem with phosphorus and nitrogen, thus stimulating the growth of marine algae, causing algal blooms. These blooms can sometimes release harmful toxins into the environment, effectively poisoning the ecosystem. Next up, oil pollution. Oil comes from deep inside the earth. As you can imagine, it takes on pretty ingenious engineering to pump it from the ground. Most of the time, these oil reserves under the ground are also under the ocean. Therefore, this is pretty risky business. And as you can imagine, things go wrong. When they do, they have detrimental effects to the wider environment. A polluter we don't hear much about, well, that's noise pollution. This is a very different type of pollution, as in the ocean, it doesn't necessarily affect humans, nor is it a physical problem. Noise pollution is as a result of high shipping traffic and drilling for oil platforms or offshore wind farms. Noise pollution can significantly affect a cetacean's ability to communicate within its own species. This is because marine mammals use echolocation to communicate or speak with each other. Did you know, shipping traffic can be heard 60 kilometres away from its source and 3,000 metres depth. Lastly, marine debris. 80% of marine debris has come from the land. Marine debris includes single-use plastics, fishing gear and even spills from shipping containers. There is so much marine debris on our oceans that there's a section of the Pacific Ocean called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. This is because the currents in this area move in a circular pattern called a gyre. This effectively traps the buoyant marine debris. Scientists have estimated the Great Pacific Garbage Patch to be 1.6 million kilometres squared. That's three times the size of France. It's not all doom and gloom though. There are many different things that you can do to help protect our marine environment and reduce your marine pollution. Here's a few tips and tricks. First up, purchase a reusable water bottle. Why not use pencils and crayons instead of felted pens and biros? Use cloths instead of wet wipes or sponges. Grow your own herbs and vegetables. Go to your local refill shop and take the containers back. Or shop locally. This can significantly reduce your plastic pollution, greenhouse gas emissions, and it reduces shipping traffic.